Hey, what's going on guys? Cut Truth here with some more Battlefield 3 Aftermath gameplay, and I'm finally back after finishing up my semester finals. That's why I've been away for just a couple days. I had to uh, study for those and then take them, so I'm glad to be done with this semester, but I don't want to talk about it anymore because, hey, once you think about school uh, while it's out, so... Let's go ahead and move on here, and today I've got some uh, some aftermath game aftermath, excuse me, gameplay. Like I said, I'm playing some conquest on Marcos Monolith, and I know I post this uh, map a lot in my videos. It's just I always seem to end up playing on this map whenever I'm going through playing on aftermath, and I don't know why. Just I guess there's servers. Problem is that there w there's not many like dice servers right now that are running the new maps. At least this was probably this gameplay is probably more than a week old, so. This was back when they, we were still just having uh, the custom servers, and a lot of them would just run Markaz sometimes back to back, and it was that's what I ended up playing on. So I like the map; it's it's pretty good. But I'm playing with uh, with my buddy Trevor here. We actually ended up doing both of us pretty darn well, and uh, I'm not saying that we we're the reason we won the game, but uh, we scored pretty darn high, and we're going up against some good competition, which you'll see by the end scoreboard. So hopefully you guys enjoy this gameplay. I'm running Engineer with the Spaz-12 with Slow Grounds. Yes, finally using this again. It's still my favorite gun in the game. Uh, not the best gun by any means, but by it is my favorite. Still really do enjoy using this weapon. But today I want to talk to you guys about something that it's not really like a controversy as in like an anger fighting bickering back and forth. It's more of just like a friendly conversation is the topic. And that is back to Karkin versus Aftermath and the two DLCs for Battlefield 3 that I would this is I would say by far are the two I don't know, most well accepted the most enjoyable DLCs by the majority of the Battlefield 3 players. There's some guys that obviously will enjoy the armor kill, some will enjoy close quarters, but for the most part back to Karkin, at least prior to Aftermath was considered to be the best DLC. Since Aftermath has come out, a lot of people are kind of saying, hey, maybe this is the best DLC now, because it was very well received, not only on PlayStation 3 here, but PC, Xbox, very well received by the majority of the players. So it really does beg the question, did, is Aftermath a better DLC than Back to Karkin? Before I move any further, this is why I love the slow ground so much. Just watch this shot. I missed the first three here, pop my head around the corner again, boom, take that guy out. Oh, I love the slugs, they're just so awesome. But getting back to my point about uh, Back to Karkin and Aftermath, when you take a look at both of these DLCs, you gotta look at them side by side, compare it to each other. It's very difficult to just declare a winner outright. Just, hey, this one is so much, it's a much better DLC because both of them are very similar to each other. And there's one main thing about them that makes them just so amazing expansions for this game. And that is just their map design. The map design of both these DLCs is wonderful and it makes the experience a lot of fun. I'm always having fun when I'm playing in Back to Karkin servers or Aftermath servers. It's just a blast every time I play. And I think because of that, it, it's a little bit difficult to really just look and go, hey, this DLC is better because just the map design overall. It's not as open. It's not just quite as just, you know, chaotic and just lanes everywhere, just linear thing. It's not, it's not anything like that. It's got a good flow and feel to each and every map. Now, I think in Back to Karkin, it focuses a little bit more on the vehicles than Aftermath does. I'm really quick about the gameplay here. I'm horrible with the heavy machine gun. I'm going to say that right now. I hate this thing. I honestly don't even know why it's on my tank. I much prefer the light machine gun over the heavy, and it, I'm never going to run this thing again. I would never, honestly, I'm not going to recommend it. I think it's a horrible thing. I mean, it's not horrible. If you're good with it, use it, but I would really recommend the light machine gun. It's, for me, so much better than the heavy, and I get a lot more kills with the light than I do the heavy one. So, anyway, that's more of a personal preference thing. But when getting back to back to Karkin, it, it's, I think it focuses a little bit more on vehicles than Aftermath does. Aftermath, there are a decent number of vehicles, but there's not quite as many as there are in back to Karkin. So it does place more emphasis on playing engineer, playing supports, playing someone that can take out vehicles. But you can play assault and recon and still help your team out and still do well. And that's what I think both these DLCs, that feeling they, they have in common, that you can do that on both of these uh, set of maps and still have fun, still do well, and help your team win. Now, one thing I will say about Aftermath that I think perhaps in many people's minds will give it an edge over back to Karkin is, first of all, if they are not a vehicle heavy person. If they don't like vehicles, Aftermath is going to suit them a little bit better. Second thing is, Aftermath has come out basically a year after Battlefield 3 has released. Back to Karkin came out so early in the game's lifetime. It was, I think, about, what, almost a month, about a month and like a week or something like that when Back to Karkin came out. 
And so many people were still just getting used to the game. And this DLC came out and it was like, it was just extra maps that, that just didn't make it in the game. Like, oh, by the way, here, these maps are supposed to be in there too. It's almost like it was kind of like that. And it really is not a expansion for the game, even though it technically is. So many people's minds, Aftermath was a much better DLC in that regards because at the time when this DLC Aftermath came out, Battlefield 3 was kind of struggling in its support and just its viewpoint among a lot of players because Close Quarters basically flopped, Armored Kill was pretty much a flop, and so Aftermath really kind of, for a lot of people, saved this game. And because of that, they view it in a much higher regard than Back to Karkin, just because Back to Karkin came out around the time that that new feeling was still around for this game. It was still like, hey, this is such a, you know, it's a cool game. And it's like, here, here's four more maps to add on to it when we're still figuring everything out. So it's like, oh, wow, hey, you know, here's more maps, even though it really, it's not like the game at that point needed saving. It's It was still fresh, new, people were still really enjoying it. So back to Kark in that regards, was it, its impact on the game I don't think was as great as Aftermath is. Now, another couple things is that in Back to Karkin, there were 10 new weapons were introduced. Aftermath only had the crossbow. So for many people, that kind of gives an edge to Back to Karkin in that regards. I would agree with that just because the crossbow is fun. Practicality-wise, it's difficult to use correctly in the right scenarios just because they, they so for me, they so rarely come up. I don't find myself really using the crossbow that much except for the scanball. I think that's a great tool. Now, in terms of different game modes, I feel that Back to Karkin's Rush in my opinion, is the best in the game. Better than Aftermath. However, Conquest on Aftermath, I feel, is a lot better than uh, than it is on Back to Karkin. That's kind of more of a personal thing, though. So, guys, leave me your thoughts below. What you all think of these two DLCs? I don't think there's really a clear-cut winner here. I think you can make an argument for both of them. They're fantastic DLCs. Map design is great. They're just a blast to play and just so much fun. If you guys enjoyed this commentary, consider rating it. And uh, once again, leave your thoughts about this below. I'm curious to hear what, you, hear what you guys have to say about it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.